Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. So I'm Clement Vidal again from Essential Robotics in France. Um, we do intraoperative imaging and robotics for orthopedic surgery. And as such, we are at the crossroads of traditional markets, orthopedic devices, intraoperative imaging, and high gross markets like robotics and digital surgery. What we want to do is to make surgical robotics a standard of care for orthopedics, the same way it is already for many indications in soft tissue surgery. To do so, we have developed a unique, unified platform, including 2D, 3D imaging, intraoperative imaging, navigation, and robotics. We are not an implant manufacturer. Our platform is implant agnostic. And actually, we have developed a truly open model. By open, I mean that we um, developed on behalf of, or we support development of application for our implant partners to use their implants with our platform. And we go beyond that. We are offering um, development kit and environment, including tools, framework, technical, regulatory, everything, for independent third party to develop their own digital surgery application dedicated to a clinical education in orthopedics to be hosted and used on our platform. And those applications, they include obviously software with um, a dedicated and uh, optimized workflow, uh, but also instrumentation to be, let's say, attached at the end of the robotic arm, at the end effector. With this uh, disruptive open model, we want to foster an ecosystem in order to develop a true multi-application robotic platform for orthopedic surgery, compatible with multiple implants uh, and uh, uh, applicable to uh, uh, several surgical indications within orthopedics, right? And that's only thanks to this disruptive model that we can achieve this ambitious goal. And I believe this is our true innovation as a, as a business model and approach of the market. Company was created in 2009. Uh, we raised 100 million US dollars in Series C. Uh, we have FDA clearance for our product. We have an install base in Europe. Uh, our founder, Steph Lavallee, and current CEO, has an impressive track record in uh, digital surgery and robotics, with uh, several exits to major companies in the field, such as uh, Exact Tech, Smith and Nephew, uh, GLSCare, uh, JNJ. Um, and I'm delighted to announce that uh, I will be uh, taking the lead as a CEO of Essential Robotics from this summer, uh, as Steph will be transitioning to chairman of the board. Uh, I have myself uh, 20 plus years experience in the field as well, robotic surgery and navigation, both in soft tissue surgery and um, uh, orthopedics. Okay, so this is our product in the OR. The workflow starts with um, intraoperative imaging. So we do a 3D image uh, based on a set of 2D images. It can be 90 to 180 2D images taken to create a 3D volume. The more images, the higher precision. But the less images, uh, the less radiation. With our low dose 90 images, we reduce by a six-fold the radiation compared to a metronic arm, for instance. If you see the, the blue um, jig in the middle on the patient, uh, is how we make the registration between the digital image and the patient positioning in the OR. We have an online 3D reconstruction. It, it takes a few, few seconds. And after this reconstruction, the surgeon in the OR benefits from a, a CT-like image of the patient live. On this image, the surgeon is going to do its intraoperative planning, which starts with um, anatomy identification um, and labeling this is a spine application, so of the vertebrae. Right now, it's a manual step. We're working on automating. We have the software. We're currently uh, validating this software based on AI. The surgeon is then going to select, uh, in that case, the pedicle he wants to instrument. The system and the software automatically pre-position the implant onto the pedicle, and the surgeon can adapt uh, the position, the fine tune, I would say, the position of the, of the implants in the, in the vertebrae. And with, with a different cross section, it can check the good positioning. And in that case, for instance, the absence of pedicle breach. Uh, it's, it's a very precise positioning of the implants on the real patient anatomy, intraoperative uh, anatomy. Surgeon is then selecting a, a robotic workflow. I won't get into the details. And then we'll move 
uh, at the patient date site on the patient. So um, the surgeon removes the jig that has been used for imaging. And is replacing by a reference used for navigation. We do a couple control points to uh, ensure optimal accuracy of navigation and robotics. And then the surgeon is going to bring over the robotic arm. It's a cobot, so you can manually bring it uh, over the patient with the white buttons. And then with our green button, the robot is going to automatically align a tool guide onto the pre-planned target. We have a unique dynamic motion compensation feature. You see that the robotic arm dynamically follows in real time any, any, any movement of the patient anatomy uh, for increased precision. So then the surgeon is inserting a tube in the tool guide and will just drill in that tube. In our universal implant agnostic application, the surgeon is placing what we call a K wire. So it's like a guide wire that will be used later on during the surgery to tap if necessary and actually place the implant in the, uh, in the pedicle hole. Then the surgeon will select the next target. The robot will align onto the next target. And again, it will perform the uh, pilot hole. As you can see here, the surgery is percutaneous, minimally invasive. And we have an innovative, proprietary, and patented uh, system to attach the patient reference so that the blue thing here again onto the spine of the patient with those pins uh, attached to the uh, spinous process of the patient's uh, vertebrae. It's minimally invasive and it's very close to the zone, the anatomical zone on which the patient, the surgeon is operating for again increased precision and accuracy. We do reach uh, um, unachieved precision uh, compared to other robotic systems. With this offer, uh, we have a two axis go to market strategy. First one is direct sales. Uh, we do actually work hand in hand with our implant partner. Those companies who have developed or will develop their own application on our platform for our platform to be used with their implants. It's really a win-win situation, right? Those are the you know, mid-sized spine surgery companies. They cannot afford a robotic program. It costs like hundreds of billion US dollar. It takes five to 10 years, right? They just cannot afford it and it's a huge defocus. We bring the robotic solution and they bring us the customer base. Second axis is uh, through licensing, OEM, and now we, we have a, a few preferred partners we work with, mainly major, and they come to us because we have the technology, we go fast, and we deliver. Uh, we have secured 100 million US dollar uh, contract with this activity. It's our main revenue stream as of today. Growth strategy, uh, we want to install uh, our platform in 20 flagship hospitals in the US uh, in the next coming years. Uh, and we are still looking for more industrial and strategic partners to develop more application on our platform, right? It's key in our strategy. If anybody in the room is interested, please reach out to me. Um, we are expanding our presence in North America, and I'm delighted to announce the appointment of Lisa Jacobs as our uh, US president starting this summer. At this stage, we are actually not looking for money. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a solid revenue stream with our licensing OEM activity. Nevertheless, we believe there is a window of opportunity for a financial or actually strategic uh, partnership, as I mentioned, for new application uh, to join Essential Robotics and accelerate even further our growth towards our objective of uh, IPO within uh, five years from now. Thank you very much for your attention. Again, I'm Clement Vidal. Feel free to reach out with any question. Thank you.